Hey guys, today we're talking about TFSA qualified investments. A lot of people have paid a lot of fines because they didn't follow the rules with respect to what is a qualified investment and today we're going to cover what you can and can't put in your TFSA. If this is something that's on top of mind for you, you're wondering what you can put, maybe you got a private corporation, you're not sure exactly how this works, guys go to speaktorob.com. This is exactly what we do for people. We've done this hundreds of times. I know it inside out. We'll book a consultation, no obligation. You're free to chat with us about that and get some advice and get some peace of mind. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. Please subscribe to our videos, uh, give us a like and give us a follow or give us your comments. I'd love to hear your two cents about TFSA qualified investments or anything else that's on your mind. Today, TFSA qualified investments, let's take a look at what can and can't be in there. First of all, the name TFSA. Let's talk about that for a sec. When this name came out, uh, way back in 2009, I think, um, they gave it the tax-free savings account. I personally would have preferred the tax-free investment account because what ended up happening is a lot of Canadians thought this was a savings account, like a, a bank kind of savings account. And they would put their cash, their hard-earned cash, in a savings account and not in an investment account. So historically, investments have performed dramatically better than cash in a cash savings account and yet all these Canadians were losing potential tax-free gains on the TFSA over time. As you guys know, in the TFSA, all the growth, all the dividends, all the income, everything that happens in the TFSA is completely tax-free for life. It's liquid, you could pull it out, you regain the contribution room next year. Super fantastic tool, if you don't have one, give us a call, uh, speak to Rob, give us a reach out, we'd love to chat with you about that. What can you put in there? Obviously, you can put money, you can put straight cash, you can put GICs, you can put term deposits, that's done through you know, a bank or a credit union. Those will be kind of at the lower earning aspect of it. You could also put any securities that are listed on an exchange. Shares of corporation, you can do warrants, options, units of exchange traded funds, you can do real estate investment trusts, uh, REITs, uh, you can also do mutual funds, segregated funds, all of those are potential options. You can do Canada savings bonds, provincial bonds, corporate bonds if you'd like. Uh, you can do debt obligations of a corporation that trades on a design stock exchange. You can do debt obligations of anything that has you know, um, investment grade rating. You can do insured mortgages. Um, so basically the way it works is think of any investment that you know of that's publicly traded, uh, that's easily accessible. Most investments that most people are aware of commonly can be put in a TFSA. Now, why would you rather have shares of a company versus a term deposit? So let's say you have a growth stock, a tech stock, a Google or something like that in your portfolio, and it grows. Let's say it grows at 10 or 15 or 20% per year. All of that growth, all of it is tax-free, and you're saving the tax on that growth. So you're saving quite a bit of taxes versus to the interest or the income on a 2% GIC. Something to consider, definitely. Now. Again, if you're concerned about this, if you're not sure what to do with respect to private corporations or maybe you have private options, go to speaktorob.com, give us a call and we'll figure it out. First of all, the, the private corporations are one that people sometimes confuse and don't understand. So maybe you're an owner of a company that's a private corporation, you want to put that in your TFSA because you want to put it a deflated value. Maybe you want to say the shares are worth five bucks, but in your mind they're actually worth 20 or maybe you know they're going to be sold at a future date at 50 bucks, and you're trying to make a huge windfall in your TFSA, I would caution you, caution you to definitely speak to, a, to an expert about that, either your accountant or us, because CRA is likely to crack down on that and they're likely not going to allow it. The fines are pretty intense, they're pretty severe if you put a non-qualified investment in the TFSA. So the ones that I would watch if I were you were definitely private corporations, if you own a private corporation, private options and trusts, uh, private options that you own and in trust or even just straight up private options, those can definitely uh, trigger alarm bells because they're, they're technically not qualified. You should get an opinion from either from us or for your tax accountant on that. They can be a little complicated but we certainly don't want you to be ca caught offside with a non-qualified TFSA and then you end up losing all the tax-free growth and you end up paying the tax on all that and the penalties. So we don't want that to happen. So again, securities, bonds, stocks, um, preferred shares, debentures, mutual funds, seg funds, GICs, term deposits, all of those can go in a TFSA. All of those are qualified investments. 
the TFSA is an extremely useful tool, folks. Please make sure you talk to a guy like me or you talk to an investment expert to make sure that you understand what should be in there. You should not have in there, it's very important that you have the stuff that is either going to grow the most in your portfolio or the stuff that has the highest taxable impact on your portfolio. Ideally, in an ideal world, in 20, 30, 40 years, we all have half a million dollar or a million dollar TFSAs. That's the goal. We want to build in the TFSA over time to get that tax-free income for life. Folks, thanks for watching. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. Please subscribe, like, and give us your comments. We'd love to hear what you got for us today. Thanks. Have a great day.